Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We've got a lot to share with you this week as we head into Zion National Park, so let's get started. Before we dive into everything Zion, we wanted to take you along with us as we did two short hikes outside of the park. The uh, Belly of the Dragon and the Sand Caves. Hey, we're at the Belly of the Dragon. Sorry, it's windy. Uh, this originally was a storm drain that over time has been eroded and is now more like a cave. So we're about to go check this out. Oh, there's like, yeah, writing all over the walls. It's actually pretty cool looking. Okay, we made it to the section of Zion National Park. Now Zion's actually the fourth most popular national park. It's even ahead of Yellowstone and Yosemite. You can't think of Zion without thinking of Angels Landing and the Narrows. Now with that being said, there's a little bit of planning you need to do before your visit. Zion is open year round and each season offers different activities. The cost is $35 for a seven day pass or free if you possess an annual or lifetime pass. US veterans also have free access. Okay, a few tidbits of information that's gonna make planning your trip to Zion a lot easier. Now, I found all this at nps.gov on the Zion page under basic information. I'm gonna throw some graphics up so you can follow along with me as I go through this with you. The park has two entrances. You can enter from the east on Highway 89 coming from Mount Carmel or come through the south entrance if you're coming through Springdale. Traveling from the east allows you to pass through a one mile long tunnel through the mountain. Call ahead though if you're coming by RV or towing a large load as you'll need an escort through the tunnel. Whichever one you enter, it's best to park at the visitor center. Make sure to arrive early though as parking lot is usually full by 9 a.m. even on the weekdays. If you can't find a spot there, your best option is to park in a designated spot in the town of Springdale. Zion offers a free shuttle from Springdale into the park's visitor center. No, Zion's here. It's no bigger than a mash hit. If you take anything away from this video, let it be this. Decide how you're going to see the park from here. The most popular option is the Zion Canyon shuttle, not to be confused with the Springdale shuttle. So we just made it on the shuttle and we are headed to the grotto, which is the trailhead for Angels Landing. This park shuttle requires tickets that must be bought in advance at recreation.gov. These shuttles are only running at about 30% capacity due to COVID restrictions and tickets literally sell out in a matter of minutes. I'll walk you through how to purchase a ticket. Head on over to recreation.gov and be sure to either set up an account or sign in. You cannot purchase tickets if you don't have an account. 
Advanced tickets are released twice a month. Tickets are also released at 5 p.m. Mountain Time for the next day. You need to be logged in and ready to claim your ticket by around 4.55. Once the clock hits 5, you'll need to move quickly. Open up the calendar to select your date, enter the number of tickets you need, max number of 8, then click the time slot. Make sure you have a plan B in case your desired time isn't available. From here, you'll have 15 minutes to finalize your payment. Good luck. So what happens if you don't get a ticket? You can walk, but consider how far you'll be walking to your trailhead in addition to your hike. E-biking is another popular option. You can also charter a private shuttle, but these can be expensive. We saw rates from $50 to $200 per person. Be sure to take a screenshot or print your tickets before arriving at the park. Okay, now to the good stuff. We're gonna tell you a little bit more about Angel's Landing. According to the information sheet from Zion, Angel's Landing is a very strenuous 5.4 mile out and back hike. The West Rim Trail actually takes you most of the way to Angel's Landing. Uh, once you get to Scout's Lookout, Angel's Landing technically is the last half mile of the hike up through the chain section. think? This is awesome. It's a little bit tiring, but it's worth it. family of three we've been on a lot of hikes a lot of strenuous hikes that's not new to us but what would you say to somebody that's looking to do this hike either solo or with their family what would you what would you say about the chain section just take your time um, we have 11 year old son Carter I believe he could do it just fine his mom kind of held him back a little bit um, yeah. there are some ledges and cliffs and you stay close to the chains Follow the chains and follow the path, you'll be fine, I think. Um, it's not really strenuous, I think. There's no really upper body strength you gotta use. I mean, it's just heights, I think. You're way up there. Um, so, I mean, if you're not scared of heights, you'd be good to go, so. Yep, so we, all three of us, made it through the first part of the chains, and then you kind of, uh, you come to like a hump area before you go to the summit. And Carter is really good at hiking, yeah. And he did a really good job going through that first part of the trip. He would have done just fine. I just, I think my mom anxiety <laughs> got to me too much. I mean, yeah. this is rated as one of the most dangerous trails in the world, and people have died here. So it's just something not to deter you, but something to keep in mind. And looking back, it's almost embarrassing because I'm like holding on to Carter, you know, saying, be careful, be careful. And Carter's like, Mom, I've got this. Yeah. And I, I don't know, I just wasn't ready just being a mom do all that with him yeah. so we stayed uh there was there's was a spot where you can stop before you go on to the summit and me and carter yeah. stayed put and chance and john went on up to the summit here we are angel's landing in the chains katie and carter right there good angel's landing
made it. To our friends, the Farnsworths. John, Kristen, Aaron, Ethan, and Chloe. We can't tell you how much we've enjoyed making crazy memories full of adventure. We wish you the very best as you follow your own No Ordinary Path. Check back next week as we make one final stop on our way to Reno. As always, please like and subscribe.